si vous pouvez bien prendre 10 minutes, M. Sifu, ça serait intéressant. Veuillez passer votre communication. Abene, Nsumba, greetings in my ancestral Balanta language. I think it is appropriate to uh, start off in, in our language. Okay, I will start again. Uh, Abene, thank you. Nsumba, greetings in my Balanta ancestral language. Um, very honored to be presenting today. And I want to thank Sertotola and especially the African Roots and Heritage Foundation and Professor Anita Jop, that um, is the reason why I am here. Um, when I got invited to present, I was so excited, I wrote an 87-page paper. I wanted to document everything precisely as a scholar. And then I found out I was going to have 15 minutes to present so I wrote a six-page executive summary, and I will be happy to share it with all of you. So now, I'm not going to use any of that because I have to summarize what I want to say. And I want to start by saying that I was afraid that my presentation, which is entitled New African Consciousness versus New African Thought, Mysticism in the Age of Artificial Intelligence, I was afraid that maybe I would be mocked and ridiculed because I was going to speak about what I call non-intellectual faculties of knowing and abilities that transcend our normal capacities, our abilities to connect directly with the supreme intelligence that is running all of our internal systems inside every single cell of our body and is governing the 3,200 galaxies in our solar system and the 10 to the 10th to the 16th number of potential galaxies that are out there. There is this supreme intelligence and it lives inside our body. And we have the capacity to uh, communicate directly with this supreme intelligence. And it gives us a knowledge, a gnosis. It is what I call non-intellectual. So we have this faculty of our mind that is the intellectual capacity where we are receiving information from the environment and we process it primarily in our brain. We take this data, we store it, we rearrange it, and then we represent it. Well now, that mechanical process of thought is handled mostly by computers and artificial intelligence that can do it better than the human mind. If I ask you right now, Right, um, uh, give me the list of the 20 um, uh, uh, most popular um, African novelists. I can do that search on Google and I will get the information in a matter of seconds. But if I ask you, it will take you some time and you might not even be able to complete it. So that intellectual processing is going to be handled by artificial, uh, artificial intelligence. The thing that artificial intelligence can't do is what I call consciousness. Consciousness is the ability to communicate internally with the supreme intelligence that is uh, uh, coordinating the trillions of cells in your heart and in your lungs and causing them to work harmoniously. Now anybody that manages a company or a country of 50 million or 200 million knows how difficult it is to get all of these different elements to work together in harmony. But we have that intelligence within inside us and throughout the universe. So in the future, those who have power are not gonna be those who have the greatest intellectual capacity. It will be those who have the greatest non-intellectual capacity or what I call inner engineering technologies that can be taught and that are being taught outside of Africa. The United States, in research institutions and through its Central Intelligence Agency, spent hundreds of millions of dollars in the 1960s to develop some of these inner engineering technologies, such as remote viewing, which is the ability to see at a distance right, what is going on halfway around the world. And the Russians also. I would, my paper discusses this in detail. But what I want to do right now is to give 
a few concrete African examples. First, I want to start with the ancient Kemetic or Egyptian example. Actually, I want to go before that because, as our great scholars tell us, we cannot understand Kemetic uh, um, civilization and culture until we understand the pre-Kemetic Bantu and Anu Nilotic cultures that created the first dynasty in Kemet. And we know, especially those of you in Cameroon uh, and with the Bantu cultures, that we have this ability to speak to what we call the living deceased, right? There is what is called an Ina. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, right? So we have this ability to talk to the ancestors who are existing in another realm. And we could literally see a part of their spiritual anatomy that was still present on Earth. Western science likes to call it an aura or a ghost. But Bantu have its own um, uh, uh, language to describe this, okay? So right there is an example of this ability, um, the West likes to call it supernatural ability, but an ability to access information from another realm. My second example is, by the time you get to Kemetic culture, you have knowledge of spiritual anatomy. Meaning, for example, most of us in this room know our physical anatomy. If I were to ask you what are the parts and systems that make up your physical body, you can tell me. I have arms and legs, ears, eyes, nose. I have a respiratory system, a, cardio, a cardio system, a neurological system. But if I ask you, name the parts and systems of your spiritual anatomy, because you are a spiritual being. Most of us cannot name those parts. And as a result, we can't have intelligent scientific conversations about the universal laws and principles that govern the functioning of these parts and systems. But our ancient Kemetic ancestors did. They could tell you about the, the ket, which is the physical body. They could tell you about the ka, which is the, um, what we would call vital essence. They could tell you about the sa, which is the spirit that enters into the body. They could tell you about the ba, which is what we would call personality, that is the result of your accumulated experiences in the physical realm. They had a whole nomenclature and lexicon to describe the spiritual body, right, and how it works and how it functions. So, for example, they will say that the sa, or this divine energy, spiritual energy, entered into the ket, or the physical body, um, of uh, a, a, a person, or a ba, that we call jehuti, or that is later on translated as tehuti, which is becomes taught, which is becomes thought. And jehuti is this person, right, who um, uh, had this divine connection, and as a result was able to write 1,100 books and is the father of what we call civilization, science, medicine, all of these things. So we have an African example from the ancient time. Now, let me fast forward to a more modern time in the United States because I've told I have three minutes left and I've only just begun. In the 1860s, a young child was born and his name was George Washington Carver, okay? George Washington Carver was well known for his ability to speak to plants. And as a result, right, he was able to um, find more than 320 uses of the peanut. The, the peanut literally told him, do this, do this, do this, do this. This is a, a person who didn't have the benefit of our modern education. Now, he was recruited to teach at Tuskegee University, and there they were over uh, farming cotton and tobacco. He said, no, plant the peanut and plant sweet potato, and this will help replenish the soil. You'll get greater yields, etc." When the farmers did this, they grew so much peanut and sweet potato that they couldn't sell it. So at that point, the peanut told George Washington Carver, do this, do this, you can make paint, you can make clothes, you can do this. And so as a result, and a lot of people don't understand this, Dr. Carver transformed the American Southern economy, developed markets for these products. 
So what I am saying for this conference at the New African Thought is we need institutions that can harness those, the, the ganda, the initiations that are going on throughout Africa that are teaching some of these inner engineering technologies, right? Um, and also train them on how to deploy that for the benefit of the continent, okay? Um, maybe I have one minute left. Um, I want to say this. One of the most important aspects in our ability to communicate with this supreme intelligence, both internal and external, is related to our melanin. And we must view our melanin as one of Africa's greatest raw materials because it is the only organic semiconductor, right, um, which is rare and is highly valuable. It is able to receive light energy, right, and modulate it between uh, the electrons, which runs on uh, uh, um, a, a current that is um, e uh, electrical or electromagnetic, right? This is what computers and phones use. But it also has the ability to run a current that organic uh, structures like our brain and our muscles use, which is ionic. Right now, NASA, the space agency in the United States, is spending hundreds of millions of dollars to try and other uh, private institutions to try to create artificial melanin to use as superconductors, right? In because of this ability to modulate between one machine and man, but also its ability to help us with telepathic communication, right? Um, uh, and other faculties of knowing. So, since I don't have any more time, right, I'm going to wrap it up by saying that please, I want to, you to read my paper because there's so much more. Um, and when we harness this capacity, and Professor Biogo was talking about this last night when he was talking about um, the asymmetrical mirror theory. I understood exactly what he's talking about because one, I have these powers, and two, I've been researching it. Right? And he's, he's right on point. And if we can have an institute to bring those people with these powers who can learn to teach them in a step-by-step -step process because we all have these abilities. We can see into the future. We can see across the planet. We can do things that we can barely imagine. And um, we were told in the opening session, we have to have an ideal. We have to make the impossible possible. And I can help shape that. Thank you. Je vais dire merci infiniment à Monsieur Sifui. Et 